What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 58 of Autodesk Fusion. Today I'm working on the automata box. We're going to drill some holes, throw in a crankshaft with a handle, and then we'll call it finished. I'm going to very particularly walk through some specifics on where people can get lost at. And if anything, uh, you'll see some warning signs already showing up on my screen right here. I'll talk about some of those in a moment. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole on our left side and then we'll see how that update then happens on the uh, atomic assembly full. All right, so let's go back to our left side and let's create a sketch. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a line from corner to corner. And what this allows me to do is find the very center of that square quite easily. I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard and then right click construction line and this will make this line construction line however you can see it's still selected so anytime something's selected in fusion what I'm gonna do is hit escape key a lot so my left hand is resting on my keyboard quite often all right right click make that a construction line and then we're gonna make this diameter right here be a quarter inch the reason being is that the the diameter we're going to be using for our uh, crankshaft is going to be a quarter inch down rod. Click OK and then click finish sketch. We're going to go ahead and extrude this back and make that a cut. Now we have our hole going through the center of our automata. Now you might be asking yourself the question is if I just updated this part why isn't it updated over here? And so every time you change something with your design, with a bottom-up design and how pieces come together, you have to save or let Fusion kind of automatically save and then update. But if your time is of the essence and you just made your change and you're going to flip back to your main design, go ahead and hit save. Create a user save version. Just click OK. And then now we're over here. So you can see that my, uh, my left side piece now has this warning symbol. And you'll even get a warning that some components are out of date. I went ahead and did the same thing for my right side already. So when I click this symbol up here to update, it'll take a second to think, and boom, it'll throw in whatever updates you've had for your individual parts, and then you throw them in. The one thing I had to find out is that trying to wait for this to automatically happen with like kind of an automatic save, it just takes a while. Um, so if you just do Control S and then do a user created save, all it will do is save that and allow you to update it back in your original design. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a handle. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to see on my keyboard. Let's make a circle. Let's make that a quarter inch thick and call this done. We're going to extrude that out five inches. We're going to go ahead and make this a new component and then click OK. Alrighty, so let's call this component crankshaft. And then let's go ahead and throw an end cap on there. So I'm going to do is uh, create a sketch on this end piece, and I'm just going to throw an end cap on. Oh, let's try that again. This is going to be 0 0.5 inches, a half inch end cap. Hit finish sketch. I'm going to extrude this down by a quarter inch. And we're going to do is create a new component. Reason being is that since for when we build these things, our crankshaft, which is going to be a dowel rod, is going to be different than our end cap. So let's go ahead and call that end cap. And let's make these parts. So I'm going to A on my keyboard. And we're going to change the appearance here. Uh, let's make wood. My dowel rod is going to be a lighter shade of wood, so bamboo looks okay. And my end cap is going to be made out of a darker wood substance. Okay, that looks all right for my crankshaft. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's call this A. Williams crankshaft. And then I'm done with these pieces. So I can actually close out of them. And you see when I saved it, it automatically popped up on the left data panel. If you totally forget how to have this data panel pop up, so you can click exit, and then these, these nine dots right here will show you your data panel. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and 
zoom out a little bit let's drag and drop all right now since I don't have my contact sets enabled things can go through stuff pretty easily but uh, let's go ahead and just throw that in there so let's do a join let's go ahead and capture that position let's have let me see if I can figure out this out quickly let's try this out let's have the end of this flush with the end of that yeah and you notice it did not take my end cap with it so that's gonna be okay but for motion we're gonna pick a revolute and then we're gonna go ahead and pull this down a quarter inch That way I can still put my end cap on there. Now I know we can't see it right now, but if I were to right click and animate model, we can see that this crankshaft is spinning. So what I'm gonna do here, and this sounds a little bit odd, but we're gonna do a join command, and we're gonna join this end cap to this piece right here, but we're gonna make it a rigid command. The reason being is that we want the end cap to be rigid to the crankshaft, we don't want the end cap and the crankshaft to spin independently of each other. We want them to spin as a whole unit. Okay, so this looks okay so far. So if I right click animate model, we can see that everything kind of spins together. Looking good, we're moving on. Alrighty, only thing I need to do now is create a handle and then we're done for today. So we'll click on new design and let's create our handle. Now, my handle is going to be somewhat of an, I would say, an easy design. It's just going to be a larger circle, a smaller circle, and then some distance in between. I'm going to trim up those lines a little bit, hit finish sketch, and let's go ahead and extrude this on out. Now, one thing I did forget to do was make my hole for my uh, handle, I'll fix that in a second. So let's go ahead and make this as a new component. Click OK. And this is just gonna be, this component's gonna be called handle. All right, let's go back and fix that sketch. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click on this sketch or right click and click edit sketch. And we're gonna see on the keyboard and we're gonna make this diameter be a quarter inch. Hit finish sketch. And let's actually go ahead and uh, fix that extrusion. So right click, edit feature, and we're gonna deselect that hole. Click okay, and we're looking all right so far. All right, let's create a sketch. Let's pick this plane. Let's find this circle right here. And let's do a dowel rod with a quarter inch thickness. Hit finish sketch and Let's go ahead and extrude this on out. Let's make that two inches. That looks okay. Alrighty. Yeah, two inches is okay. And we'll make it as a new component. Click OK. And then we are done. You know what? Actually, I don't like that. Let's go ahead and fix this some more. I'm going to right click and edit this sketch right here. And if I'm just thinking about the way that these are truly designed, is that this is also going to be a quarter inch hole as well. So I'm going to edit that feature. That way, I have a hole for my handle and my crankshaft to go through. So let's bring this handle back in, and we see that it's not quite in there. And that should be okay because. Uh, I'm going to have them inserted later. Hit A on my keyboard. We're going to go for appearance. And so we're going to pick up. Let's do wood again. Let's make this out of cherry and my dowel rods out of a lighter wood. And then click OK. All right. Let's save this. And let's make this a handle. So A Williams handle. Looking good. So now let's go ahead and go back to my automata 
and let's put our handle in there. Handle, drag and drop, and there we go. Looking okay. Alrighty. Everything looks okay for the most part. So I'm going to do is I'm click on join, and I'm going to join this face to that face. And that is going to be another rigid because we want the handle and the crankshaft to be rigid again. We don't want them to spin independently of each other. Okay. And then the last thing is going to be is I want to have this handle flush with the inside of this piece right here. So what I'm going to do is this is a, a kind of a if you don't want to mess things up but you know you have want them assembled, I'm going to deactivate this right side. So it still exists, but it's in my way of what I want to do. So I'm gonna click on join, capture position. We're gonna join this face right here with that face right there. Alrighty, that's looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Reactivate my right side. And we are looking all right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, if I right click and I animate model again, everything is kind of spinning as expected. Now, the problem I've found so far with this bottom up design is that um, it's very difficult to try to spin that handle. Because even though my assembly is grounded, my bottom piece here is grounded since I've thrown all these pieces in there, they will latch onto, but my pieces can move still. And so I'm gonna have a little bit of an issue of just turning that handle. Alrighty guys, but ladies and gentlemen, there we go. We have done step two of our automatas. We made the box, we've made the handle, and then tomorrow we will build some cams and get those cams thrown in there easily. Alrighty guys, that'll be it for this video. Take care and I will see you in the next one.